And today we're going to be chatting to Pippa Leanstra. She is a very dynamic woman who has just moved down to the Cape, yay, to be with us in Cape Town. And um, we're going to be talking a lot about what she does and her multiple streams of income and how she is dynamically shifting and changing her business, especially in these interesting times. As you may or may not know, the purpose of these podcasts is really just to get an understanding of how people are doing business differently so that they will hopefully inspire us to either run our own business and find ourselves in a, a situation where we need to start our own business or we are inspired to start our own business. And maybe just to obviously give us some tips if we're struggling with our own business. So I'm going to jump straight in and uh, welcome Pippa. So here we go. Hi, Pippa. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thanks. That's great. Pippa, so um, just in terms of understanding kind of what we're doing here today, you've got a good sense of why I'm interviewing you, obviously just to pick your brain. But essentially, I always like to start with a silly little question, which is really, what did you want to be when you grew up? So when you were a little girl and someone said, oh, you know, what are you going to be when you grow up? What was your first memory of that? So I don't, I don't, I've got such a shocking memory from my childhood. Um, so I don't actually remember <laughs> much, but <laughs> you know that I was, I was basically, I was always called the fashion police in my family. So um, like I would always um, tell people what they were or weren't wearing was nice or not. Or, um, and I was very into clothing from a young age. Like I loved, every time I got anything new, I wore it straight away. And it was like the highlight for me to have clothes and nice, yeah. So I've always been into that kind of thing. Brilliant. Okay, well, it's interesting because a lot of us actually, we dream of being you know, ballerinas or policemen or whatever, and we don't become those. Um, but you, you kept that, that dream alive, which is fantastic. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what kind of you're up to and what you're doing at the moment? Okay, so, so I'm a personal stylist. I've been doing it for about 10 years. Um, before that, I was working in an ad agency. Um, and I went to university and studied something, I studied like economics and psychology, so not related at all. But um, I just knew that the job that I was in was not fulfilling enough for me. And so I kind of went down the road of, of investigating all my passions. Um, and working with animals was one of, the, one of them. And I, I kind of went down that road, but I didn't want to become a vet. Um, and a veterinary nurse, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a it's long, long story. But... Um, yeah, I basically, this was personal styling, kind of came to me through, I don't know if people will remember Trini and Susanna, but they were those UK, that UK duo of um, two women who were, they wrote a whole lot of books at the time when the internet wasn't such a big thing. And I used to buy all their books. Um, they wrote like the Body Shape Bible, and I can't remember the names of the other ones, but they were on TV, they had a TV show. It was when the whole reality thing, um, you know, there were a lot of like makeover shows and stuff at the time. Right. And I started thinking, um, maybe I could do something like that. Um, and so I started practicing on my friends and doing like free wardrobe detoxes. And yeah, I just kind of realized that this was something that I could do that didn't require huge amounts of capital outlay. So the risk wasn't huge. Right. Um, it was all I really needed. Right. And yeah, I, 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 like I say, my memory is so fuzzy. <laughs> I don't remember the exact steps. But no. I just... I just remember being away for a weekend with friends and chatting about it and thinking this is something that I could try to do um, because I could just try it on the side while still working. Yeah. Okay. So was that then how you transitioned? So going from say full-time employment in an ad agency, don't worry, I also come out of an ad agency. We all make it out eventually. Um, but <laughs> but um, you, you were doing this on, on the side and was that the thing that helped you kind of, make that your full-time gig eventually yes absolutely because um i started getting confidence with what i was doing and realizing that i could actually do it and then the people that i worked for were, were amazing and they actually let me cut back my, my hours i didn't used to work on a friday so they they knew that i was wanting to make a transition um 
and they were very welcoming and let me work a four day week. And so I used to, so I used to allocate Fridays and Saturdays to seeing people. Um, yeah. And then I just thought, obviously at that point it was very much word of mouth. Um, but I remember going overseas to do a course in London because I thought I needed to have studied something in order to, to be able to just start charging people. Right. And none of the South African, uh, yeah, the South African ones just didn't resonate with me. Uh, they were quite sort of formulaic and they just seemed quite outdated. So I went to the London College of Fashion um, and I just studied for a week, which, I mean, it was fun. I don't think this doing what I do is something that you can study, to be honest. I really don't. Mm. But uh, I needed it. I needed to say I had something in order to start charging. And when I was there, my husband went to a 40th and he was chatting about what I was doing and um, one of his mates booked me and then it just went from there. I came back and I had like a first word of mouth client and then it just grew from there, yeah. Fantastic, okay, so it was really just an exponential thing that moved you forward. So I suppose what I'd love to then say, okay, well, great. It started as word of mouth, but was that able to sustain you kind of in your business growth or did you find that you needed to do any other kind of marketing or what, what else did your business need in order to kind of progress and, and grow? Yeah. yeah. So uh, word of mouth is, is great and it was amazing, but then I, um, I decided to start a blog um, yeah. because blog would draw traffic to my website okay so I really just did the blog for marketing purposes um, from an SEO point of view you know so that people if people were searching then they would come to my website right so um, so I started the blog um, and that that really helped and then social media became a thing and that's I mean Instagram and Facebook are mainly where I get my business from now really? um, yeah I mean word of mouth is still a thing definitely like but it's, um, you can't rely on that. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it was definitely, I started moving towards the internet. And then I'd obviously do any writing. I would approach magazines and say, can I write for you? Um, so I, I wrote the odd article. I, I don't know if it actually generated any business, but it was brand building for me. Um, so I would kind of be open to any opportunities. I would do the odd talk at like a women's breakfast or okay. if there was a corporate and they needed a speaker, then I would be up for that. So I did all of that kind of stuff as well for marketing, you know? Brilliant. Okay. So you really needed to put yourself out there, you know, in terms of yeah. words on social media, in front of people. And I think, you know, I mean, that's, that's right in terms of you are showcasing, you know, how people look and present themselves in the world. And so, so you needed to be able to, to put yourself out there. Was that something that came naturally to you? Are you usually quite confident and it comes easily to stand up on stage? No, no, I actually, I actually hate public speaking. Um, yeah, I can't believe I did all that stuff that I did because I don't know if I would do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't need to as much now, but in the beginning, you've just got to flip and do it. You've got to put yourself out of your comfort zone. Doing videos and stuff for my social media, that for me is relatively easy because I'm just talking in a room. I'm not actually talking to people. I'm talking into my phone. Right. Um, that I found really easy, but um, yeah, I don't have a problem putting myself out there on social media, but I do, I don't enjoy corporate events and you know, speaking at fun and yeah, it's very much out of my comfort zone. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is not, it is, I don't think, yeah, you've got to be a performer or love the limelight to, to that, for that to come easily. Okay, so yeah, you've tried a lot of different things, which is great. Um, is there anything that you've realized that maybe you hadn't thought through? So those early days where you were like, oh, I'll do this and I'll try that. And then now all of a sudden you've started that business and what did you go, oh my goodness, I didn't know I needed that to start my business. Was there anything that nugget that you didn't really know that was actually quite crucial to your business? I don't, I don't think, I don't think that, there hasn't been one thing that's been like, oh, if only I'd known that. Um, yes. But one thing that I find massively challenging and that I wish I had more skill set of is, is like my own, doing my own design work. So graphics, so like making a post look beautiful. Um, <coughs> Yeah, so te like technology-wise, I 
it would have been great to maybe have done a course or two before I, I started. Um, although at that time, social media wasn't such a big thing. So it probably would have been outdated and I would have had to do another course anyway. But I think, yeah, if you can have some kind of, if you can figure your way around a design or a Photoshop uh, suite or whatever you call it, that is a massive bonus because you always, you always need it. I'm always having to outsource it and pay somebody else to do it because I don't have the time or the inclination really to upskill myself on some of those things. Oh, and I totally agree with you. I, <laughs> Oh. Also, I would love someone to like, I wish I had another version of myself that could just go in like multiple design trailing and I could just like feed other me more work and it could just design stuff for me. But absolutely. But there are tools like, I don't know if you use them, uh, Canva, um, you know, oh. an online tool and I lean on Canva quite a lot, but then I also stand and swear at Canva quite a lot because I can't figure out to say out because I don't really know what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah and, and when, yeah, and when time is so precious, I'm just like the opportunity cost, I'm like, should I just pay someone else to do this? Yes. You know, but again, if it's an unlimited budget, then, it, then I could be like, it would be amazing, but I don't. So yes. I, you have to get on some stuff yourself. I mean, I remember the first time Instagram started doing the stories feature and I saw everybody doing these stories I was like I don't know how to do that and I'm just not going to do it and then I was like okay I need to start doing this because clearly it's a thing and then I realized if you just YouTube it if you just google how to add an Instagram story it tells you and you can do it you know so some stuff is actually really easy <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly I know I have been um for a client of mine a marketing client I've been fighting with google adwords for weeks and then I couldn't figure out what the problem was. And then I found the YouTube video and it was like something like adding square brackets or, you know, something yeah. random and pathetically easy. And I wanted to sob my heart out when I found the solution. So, um, yeah, so, so it is, that, that is quite a nice, easy hack is like, just put into Google, whatever it is you're looking for and, yeah. and ask and Google will provide. And yeah, watch exactly. lots of YouTube videos, how to, how to anything. And usually you can be helped along. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we've spoken about how you put yourself out there. Okay. But then in terms of kind of getting that client, you know, so a woman will see your video. Mm, that's nice. Does she just flick through? What is the thing that you think that you bring to the table? that gets someone to go, wait a minute, okay, I hadn't thought about that, or I want to contact her. Like, what do you, you know, from your clients, what is it that they resonate with that's different to other people who do what you do? So, I mean, the feedback that I get from so many people is that uh, I am so relatable and approachable and kind of real, because I think... A lot of people are quite, especially when all those makeover shows were happening, a lot of people are quite scared of someone coming into their house and doing their wardrobe and seeing, you know, it's quite personal. Um, and uh, they always feel like it's actually just so easy because I'm just a normal person. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just, it's all that, especially with my my social media that's the feedback I get a lot as well is that it's just so approachable and relatable and um I feel like you've got to tap into uh women's like needs so that they so that they book you so it's kind of like what is the like uh thing that they're feeling or needing and trying to tap into that yeah. um so that's sort of like overwhelm after you've had a child because your figure shape has changed I know personally and um, so I know firsthand what it's like to have this different body shape and you don't have any confidence anymore. You don't have any time anymore. So yeah, that's just like one example. Brilliant. Yeah, I agree. I know about the, the shapes changing. That's for certain. Hey, <laughs> can't yeah. get away from it. There are one or two people out there who are lucky and the rest of us just, you know, battle through. But um, yeah, yeah. that's great. I suppose... That's what comes across and it's come across through a number of interviews that I've done is that being genuine, you know, being who you are, you went into yeah. it not because someone told you so, but because you rather had a passion for it and you've yes. kind of built that business up 
And now what you find is that that's what people really come to you for is for that genuine love of what you do and that true interest and understanding in, in women's clothing, which may actually, do you ever do men? Just curious. Yeah, I do, I do, but again, it's the same principle. It's not even really about loving clothing. It's about it's about like helping someone else and making them feel good about themselves and sharing your knowledge, which is so awesome. Yes, absolutely. Like I love teaching people and letting them discover new things about themselves that they actually like about their bodies, um, and realizing that they actually can look amazing when they think they can't. Um, and yeah, so, so it applies to men as well. You know, men, men pretend to not care because they think it's macho, but they, I promise you, they all actually care and they love having someone shop for them. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? I couldn't think of anything better, especially if they got the size. Okay. Um, so <laughs> that would be absolutely fantastic. Okay, yeah. great. So um, in terms of your, your business, um, how does it... I mean, obviously there is the, the fashion element in helping people buy clothing. How does that split up into different streams of income? Uh, you know, are you able to kind of extrapolate your business so that maybe if you're not seeing clients now directly, how has your business shifted and what are you doing? So I started um, about three years ago. I started well, about four years ago now. I started doing pop-up shops. I just figured like, I'm taking people shopping to Santon City or whatever at the time, and they and I don't earn anything from what they're buying. I just charge them my time. So I was like, what happens if they buy from me? And then I can earn something from what they're actually buying. So I did a pop-up shop, and it was at that point it was just also very word of mouth. Only my clients were small, um, and it was only me, and it was it was huge amounts of work, but it was massively successful. People really liked it because then they're getting my advice for free but they're buying from me so it was right. kind of a win-win yes um and then those those just kind of built and built and now obviously with social media they have become quite big i do two a year i mean i'm supposed to be doing one in may in Joburg, but obviously can't so i'm looking at doing an online version okay um so that, that's a, that's become a massive income stream for me um and then yeah so i i did the odd like i said the odd corporate thing where somebody would say, can you come and do a workshop for our team on, we've got women's day and we need a, you know, right. but that wasn't a man. I think that's like another whole avenue. And I don't, it's just not really me to talk. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't like going, this is what you need to wear for a corporate thing. If you, I don't know. I, I'm not like an image um, consultant. Right. I just don't really. Uh, so uh I didn't really like pursue the corporate thing. Um, I'd rather just deal one on one with women. So yeah, my my main income stream is a wardrobe detoxes, personal shopping, and then my pop up shops. And then sometimes I get paid to write articles for magazines. Great. Yeah, I think you've got enough going. <laughs> that's yeah. that's quite a bit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm excited to hear about how are you going to take your your pop up shop online? Is it going to be through kind of like different websites or how, how are you going to do that? Yeah. So, so normally what I would do is I would get, I get about 10 brands under one roof and then everybody comes and shops for like three days and then the pop-up shop closes. So now I'm going to do a similar thing, probably have a few less brands and either, ha either um, get a website going or just do it through my social media channels and get people to contact me and pay through Snapscan or EFT. Um, I don't know looking at the costs and the development and all of that of it. But um, yeah, I just don't want to do nothing. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it with the whole childcare issue and no school and stuff. So I don't know if I'll be able to manage it, but yeah. I'm also doing online wardrobe consultations that, like, that are virtual just for like one hour at a time. Okay. So people will Zoom or WhatsApp me and we'll have a look and chat with their wardrobe like this. Yeah. Well, I think it's all worth a try, you know. Um, it, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. Some version of it will probably work. So I think it's a great, a great effort. I must introduce you to Michelle Liddick. I don't know if you know her. Um, she oh, yes, I know her brand. Yes. So she lives here in Fishhook. So, yes. um, yeah, so she's, um, yeah, great designer and uh, she's got lovely stuff. So definitely, I think, someone for you to meet now that you're um, in the valley. So um, we'll definitely yeah, I, I, love, 
Gotcha. Yeah, so she could maybe be one of the brands that you want to work with. Yeah. Yes. Pop up we, show. We've yeah. chatted on the phone. I asked her once about one of my previous pop ups, and she wasn't able to provide stock at that one. And then, you know, you just kind of forget there's so many, but I'd love to connect with her. Yeah. Yeah, she's lovely. She's really lovely. Great. Okay, cool. Okay, so, awesome. I also want to know in terms of kind of, so now you are in this space where you're shifting your business to meet kind of the requirements of the world we find ourselves in, which is as um, agile business people, we can. And um, I wanted to find out, have you got any goals? So maybe you had goals at the beginning of the year, but now things have changed. Are you then tweaking those goals and changing them? Do you set goals or kind of do you just play it as you go along? So I, th I find that because of my, my life with three kids under the age of nine, I, um, I just can't, I can't get to do half the stuff that I want to do. So I will have ideas of things that I want to achieve. And then if I don't get to them, then I just get bleak. So um, I kind of decided to, at the beginning of this year, especially with us moving, I decided to just let it all flow and what will be will be. I've got other ideas of, other things that I want to do that are all in this personal styling space. But again, it's just the time to allocate to them. And um, yeah, my husband travels to Joburg quite a bit. So I can't dedicate an eight hour day to my business. Yeah. So I kind of fit it in when I can. And the, I don't have, sorry, yeah, I find that when I set set goals and then I don't meet them, it's 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 just more defeating than just trying to go with it, especially this year. I just feel I don't want to be a I want to be a mom that's around. So it's a massive challenge. Um, yeah. yeah. So I basically I basically I mean in Joburg I was working in the mornings when they were at school, and then I'd work the odd evening because people would obviously come home from their job and then want to see me at like four o'clock. So I would do that every now and then, maybe once a week, once every two weeks. But most of the time I was working in the morning when the kids were at school. Um, now, obviously, the kids are at home all the time. I don't have a nanny. It's physically impossible for me to, to work right now. But um, I can do the remote thing. Like, I can have an hour wardrobe consult or, you know, I can build on this pop-up shop idea. And, yeah, so sorry, long answer to the, to the goal question. But <laughs> <laughs> No, it's very much an evolution thing. So I find as women, you, you go through that phase. You pop out the other side eventually you know my children are nine and 12 and so yeah if you've got smaller than that it is it's very hard to to see beyond especially if they're not going to school safe place for them yeah, uh, um it's yeah. almost impossible yeah i mean my youngest is three so um so it's three six and yeah it's three six and nine and i don't want to miss out on the small ages so um I've, I've kind of managed to juggle it up to now, um, but it's, yeah, it's a constant struggle, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to not do what I do. So I don't know. Yes. I no, And I think that's that thing where you've just got to go, okay. Someone explained it to me beautifully once where she was like, it's not, it's not about, um, you know, very strict boundaries. It's more about sometimes there's more time for this. And sometimes there's yes. no time for this. And it's this kind of ebb and flow. And in yes. the changing world that we're now facing, well, there's less for that and more of that, you know. And you've kind of just yeah. got to give yourself a little bit over to that. Yes, I, you know, I feel exactly the same as you. I've got all these ideas and I want to do this, and I want to do that. But the fact is, is that, well, who are you kidding? You're going to end up disappointing yourself and, be, and begrudging, you know, possibly your kids. Exactly. So yeah. you just want to be that person. So it's kind of just like, okay, let yeah. it go. It'll come when it needs to come. So, so yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I think it's a very honest answer. Yeah, I mean, when I was doing my pop-up shops, I literally wouldn't see the kids for a week because I was working like 12-hour days. But then I would not book any clients for a week after the pop-up so that I could then flip back to the kids, you know? So, yes. Um, I, yeah, I, I feel like... I don't know. I think, I think it's also personality driven. Maybe some people are more A type and they need a goal and they, I don't know, but I just found that that just adds pressure. Yeah. Sometimes pressure that you just don't need. It's just not worth it. Yeah. 
exactly. Cool. Um, all right. So if someone uh, wanted to start their own kind of business, what would be your, your gem piece of advice? I would say, yeah, I mean, I know it sounds so cliche, just do it because it's not that simple. I know that I have so many clients who are in court who are desperate to get out. Um, but for me, I really took the time to research what I wanted to do. Like I, re I wanted to research what my passions were. So, and I knew that I, I wanted to, I mean, I actually found a journal when we were moving that I'd written in my twenties and it was all about how I want to help people. I want to like share my knowledge. I want to, I want to do something that makes a difference to other people. So I was looking at NGO in the NGO space and all of that. And I realized that what I do is exactly that now. Like I'm helping people, I'm enriching another person. And I, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like freaking Mother Teresa, but <laughs> like I love sharing my knowledge. Um, and I love, I love clothes and I love, not fashion. I just love, yeah, I love, I love beautiful clothes and feeling, expressing yourself through your clothing and stuff and helping women. So I feel like if you dig deep into what you really want, like to do, what makes you passionate, what kind of fuels you, then that's the first step. Yeah. If you just kind of want to start a random business, that's cool, but it's going to be tough and then you're going to just bail unless you're really excited about it. I don't know. Absolutely. Maybe that's too ideal. No, not at all. I absolutely um, agree that you've got to start with that thing that you love and then, okay, then it's the how. But first, that going inside, going deep, finding what really works for you and resonates with you. Because as you say, when the going gets tough, which it will, then you're going yes. to absolutely be able to, to kind of step out of that. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. Okay. No, that's fantastic. It, it doesn't just happen overnight, you know? You've got to, like, I took a lot, I, I read books that whole, what colors my parachute, all that stuff. I, I really kind of, like, you know, went into the research side of it. So it takes a while. It does. It does take a while. No, no, no. But that's, but then that, once you'd found the answer, it sustained you, as you say. So otherwise you would have just left it if it was just on a whim. So absolutely. That's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, and last one. What do you love most about what you do? But I think that's come through already. But yeah, in your yeah. words. What I love the most is, is, is helping women. I really do. And men, but obviously mainly women. Um, yeah, I just love them realizing that they can look amazing when they never thought they could. Um, yeah, I love people, making people feel good and... Yeah, that's probably, that's probably the main thing. That's beautiful. I, I love that. I think everything kind of comes out of that. You know, if that's at the center of what you do, then it's very easy to kind of extrapolate it into multiple businesses, even if you wanted to, you know. So as long as you get to the core yeah, I mean, of what you do and why. Yeah, I mean, even at my pop-up shop, somebody will come in and they don't know me, but they they might have heard that I'm a stylist or maybe they don't even know that. And I'll say, can I help you? And they're either open to it or not. Some people aren't, some people are. And then I'll find them stuff and they'll get so excited and they'll, they'll be so excited at the fact that they're finding things that suit them. And because, you know, most women hate shopping because they go and try stuff on that's wrong. And then you just feel terrible. And I love that. You know, it's, it's not about like me making a sale. It's like that I'm finding something that they feel amazing and is, is awesome. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely have to meet. Maybe you have to take me shopping. Um, <laughs> I, I like beautiful clothes. I don't know where I'd go in Cape Town, to be honest, Jeepers. It's like, yeah. it's very different to Joburg. Very, very different. Yeah, Joburg's so easy. Hey, Santa and Hyde Park, off you go. Um, but um, here, it's, uh, yeah, it is, it is tricky and it is usually town, which is far for us on the side of the mountain, but um, well, I'm sure you'll, thanks. you'll find, you'll find, and there's lots of, um, yeah, designers and stuff. That well, that's, that's why all the local brands and stuff, I mean, if I think about it, most of my shopping is done at my own pop-ups, so there's a, there's, most of the local brands are based in Cape Town, so that's, so yeah. that's easy, mm. yeah, but you can it all over the place. Um, I think in town in Woodstock, so um, yeah. yeah, that's where a lot are. Oh, great. That's yep. exciting. You're going to be starting a whole new adventure when we kind of come out on the other side of this. But good luck with all the online yep. stuff. That's fantastic.
Yeah. But, oh, and where can everyone get hold of you? How do people get hold of you? Uh, so my Facebook thingy is Pippa J Personal Styling. And um, my Instagram is style underscore it underscore simple. So my website is pippaj.coza. Right. And then style it simple kind of the, the header of my blog. Um, so yeah, my Instagram is style it simple. Love that. And Love my that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting to me and sharing all your knowledge cool. and your, yeah, and your style. And, um, yeah, we will keep in touch. So thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.